welcome back my lovely viewers. If you're here, it's probably because you've watched my 1890s sports corset video and you were, like me, intrigued by the buttonhole system that replaces the traditional busk in the center front. This is simply meant to be a supplement to the main video, so I'll jump right in. To help me get started with the process of designing my own button panel, I turned to the original patent for the design submitted by Sherwood Ferris in November of 1885. The drawings look a bit complicated and technical, but the text of the patent is very long and breaks it down into minute detail. In figure 4, a long strip of fabric is doubled or folded over upon themselves so as to give a doubled or rounded edge, E. This strip is then cut into a series of detached pieces of fabric, and then one simply arranges a series of them at suitable distances apart to form the sides of the buttonholes and unite said detached pieces by a binder applied to the edges. Figure 6 shows a similar construction to that represented in figures 4 and 5, but with a cord, G, introduced within the doubled or rounded edges of the pieces and held in place by a line of stitching, S2, to give a solid or firm edge to the side of the buttonhole, B. Where the strip is of a doubled or folded over construction, the same may, if desired, be provided with an interior stiffening of buckram or other suitable material to give firmness to the buttonhole strip. So if the antiquated language combined with the technical jargon didn't clear things up for you, don't worry. I'll break that process down a bit further with the help of some visual aids. But basically, I will construct a long strip of fabric, which I will then cut up into smaller pieces, and those pieces will be rearranged and reassembled to form a sort of button placket or panel. The first step, therefore, is to determine the dimensions of that strip of fabric. This involves a certain amount of math, which some may find boring, or confusing, or both, so I will try to be clear and brief. To find the height of my strip, which will end up being the distance between each button, I took the total height of my corset at the center front and divided it by the number of buttons I was going to use. That came out to 4.64 centimeters, which is a very annoying number, so I rounded it down to 4.5 centimeters which, when added back up, would only give me 31.5 centimeters, which is one centimeter shorter than my total height. But that's okay, because I can make up that extra height on my top and bottom button panel, which is something we see in extant examples as well. But remember, this panel is not just one layer of fabric thick, but two layers folded over each other. So I took the height of the finished panel and multiplied it by two and a half, in order to have the two layers completely overlap with some extra. Then I needed to know how long to make this strip, which should be the finished width of the button panel multiplied by the number of panels needed, in this case six, because remember, the top and bottom panels are special and will be made separately. All of that to say that I'm going to need a panel that was 11 centimeters tall by at least 15 centimeters long, but I wanted to give myself plenty of room for error, so I made extra. A lot extra. So now that I had my final dimensions, it was time to cut it out of the fabric and get to work making the strip. Instead of doing an interior layer of buckram, I decided to use a piece of the same cotton twill, cut just a tiny bit more narrow than the final strip dimensions. I made sure to center the strip before folding over one edge and ironing it down. I decided to go ahead and iron the other edge down as well before adding any cording while the fabric was still completely flat. Then I pulled out my two millimeter cord and cut out two strips of the correct length plus a bit extra just to be safe. One cord was laid roughly in place and the fabric pinned down loosely over it. This cord was sewn down using just a regular sewing foot because, as you all know, I don't have a cording foot. I just made sure to press the cord right up into the crease with a tapestry needle and this process worked very well, but I would recommend making sure to pin your fabric down to prevent it from getting twisty and oddly tensioned as you sew the cord. Then, with the first cord installed, I folded over the exposed raw edge, making sure to measure so that the seam would run right down the middle of the finished strip. I then repeated the process of placing the cord, pinning it down, and stitching it down with my tapestry needle guide. The seam down the middle finished the piece up nicely, and the strip was done. Then, to make those special top and bottom panels, I repeated that whole process, but with only one cord, and by making the panels six centimeters tall instead of four and a half. Now came the slightly nerve-wracking process of cutting it up in order to stitch the segments back together vertically. Mm -hmm. 
The original patent didn't go into much detail about this step of the process, stating only that these detached pieces were united by a binder, quote, stitched on or to said detached pieces to hold them in their spaced portions apart and to close each buttonhole at its ends. Then, it may either have a second binder applied to the opposite end, or said ends be directly inserted into the margin of the garment. On the finished ferris waist, we see that one edge is indeed sewn into the body of the corset, while the other edge is covered by binding tape. Because I didn't want to leave my straps flapping about as I constructed the rest of the corset, and because I figured it'd make the process of binding easier, I sewed a thin strip of twill tape along both edges to unite all the individual pieces until those edges could be properly dealt with. So there you have it, a short video dedicated to the construction of this interesting and unique, albeit frequently copied, feature of the Ferris Good Sense Corset Waist. If this video was clear and made sense to you, give it a thumbs up. And if you feel there's a part you still don't understand, leave me a question or a comment down below and I'll do my best to clarify. That's all for this week. Thank you so much for sharing a small part of your day with me. I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! You wanna say bye? Not sure that was bye, but alright.